So my story today, it's on nutrition. Uh, so ah. yeah, so actually, we found out that we don't know what's in food, as in we don't know what's in about ninety nine percent of our food. So I got this from um, right. New Scientist, and yeah, we don't know what's in ninety nine percent of our food. Can't so they just read the ingredients. Yeah, that's the issue. They, they read sh- the ingredients. And they were like, oh. "There's there's some stuff missing here." You oh. see. So okay, okay, for example, they spoke about garlic. Garlic. Mm. What's what's in garlic? What's it made up of? Garlic. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> It's made up of a lot of, a lot of things, um, but it's it's only it, it's it's only about eighty five percent. Sorry, about eighty five percent of the things that are in garlic aren't we we don't know we don't know about. That's kind of an issue because if you think about it, tiny little amounts of molecules yeah. can really change your diet. So, for example, B twelve, vitamin B twelve. You don't need very much of it, mm-hmm. but if you don't have any of it. You get a pretty big. The deficiency is yeah. quite. You you quite know bad. when you've got a B twelve deficiency. <laughs> yeah. Um. And that's the thing. We've only got about a hundred. I think it's about one hundred and fifty nutritional components. Um. That we understand. That doesn't seem like very many. No, it's it's not. So no. if you're looking at ingredients, um, for garlic, it would only be the the nutritional components that we know about. Right. And we even ignore the things that make up the flavor. Mm-hmm. But all of these things can still have an impact on our body. Yeah. And we just, we genuinely just have no idea what's going on. So we've called it um, nutritional dark matter. Because, oh, because like the universe. Yeah, because like the universe, we just have yeah. no idea what's going on. Yeah. And and we're, we're starting to do more studies into this. So a, a team of scientists um, took a, a load of databases um, and put them and sort of put them all together. And when they couldn't find, um, when they couldn't find things in databases, they did mm-hmm. their own studies. So they found out that, um, so of the, initially there's sort of 67 components of garlic mm-hmm. that we generally think about. Um and they found another sort of 2,306 components that we've just not been looking at. Oh, my God. And, 500, and over 500 of those um, have an effect on the body. Oh, my God. Have some effect on health. And we started out with, what was it, 100 something? We started out with 100... 67. Oh, 67. Oh, 67 so official. So right. 67 official components of garlic. So this is like, if you look on the US database oh, for components of garlic, you'll, have, you'll find 67 things. We found... Over two thousand other ones, over five hundred of which affect your body. Yeah, those other five hundred don't matter. Do they? Exactly. No. So I mean, um, if you've got uh, beta carotene, do you know what beta carotene is? No, I it's don't. carrots. Yes, it's in. It's oh, in. So that, yeah. would, that would make sense. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> it's a it's a compound that's in a lot of um, in a lot of vegetables, right. and we find out that it's it's associated with heart disease. In that, I think it can lower your risk of heart disease, or it's so it's positively associated with heart uh, disease, basically. Uh. And what that what that means is. Um, yeah. You'd expect if you supplement someone with beta carotene, it will lower risk mm-hmm. of um, risk of heart disease. Right. But that's not the case. It, it, apparently, right. there's not really much correlation. But whenever beta carotene is present in a vegetable, there are about 400 other molecules that are also present. So when we were looking, so it's beta carotene plus all these other things. Yes. Yeah, so combined. exactly. So when we're looking at say right. when we think when we potentially think that um, a molecule in food has an effect on the body, it could yeah. just be any of the other molecules that are there whenever that molecule is there. Yeah. It could be sort of a, almost a or signal. like those molecules interacting with, like they, you yeah, have it, to have all that combination. You could, you, it yeah. could be a combination. It could just be yeah. that when beta carotene is there, let's say um, molecule two is there mm-hmm. and molecule two is what actually does something. Mm-hmm. Beta carotene doesn't do anything, but it, it's always there when molecule two is there. Yeah. So if you give someone just beta carotene, you're not going to do anything. You'd need to give them molecule two. Yeah. But we don't know we, d- we just don't know most of the things that are in our food. Right, okay. Yeah, it's very stressful, to be honest. Um, it's 99, so it's about, um, like I said, about 99%. It's, I've seen different numbers between anywhere from anywhere between sort of 99.5 to 85% um, of, yeah. of things that are in our food. We just don't know what they are. And obviously this can have a massive effect on health. Like garlic, for example, can be really good for your health, but we just don't know exactly why. Because we don't know all of the things that are in it. Yeah. So we're we're doing more. Feel quite uneasy (laughs) about (laughs) eating. (laughs) Exactly. What am I putting in my body? (laughs) This team they've built um a database called Food DB F W O Yeah D B Food Database basically. Oh okay. Yeah. So they've uh, they've they started building that. So we're now trying to find out all of the all of the different nutrients and chemicals Mm -hmm. that are in our food that we just haven't we haven't discovered yet. Well, thank God. Yeah. Exactly. Thank God. One day we'll know. And at that point, we can just get rid of food altogether true we can just we can just start separating out all the things we need (laughs) yep just consuming that stuff exactly exactly then we'll live forever robin alice has asked in the chat um what's your opinion on the calories on menus that are being introduced in the uk to tackle obesity do you think it will make a difference 
So this, this basically, for a bit of background for people who aren't from the UK, is our government um, have introduced a um, set of new um, ideas to try and tackle obesity in the UK. One of those is that uh, calorie numbers will be more prominently shown on restaurant menus. Yeah, so, okay. Um, first, a quick thing. This is something that I've been I've noticed for a while. People don't seem to know what calories are. They think it's something that's in food. Yeah, um, for a long time, I thought calorie was an actual, like like a thing, like yeah. a substance that's in a food. Yeah, so many people, but yeah. But it's not that. It's kind of like more to do with a measurement, right? Yeah, calorie is literally just a measurement of um, a measurement of energy. So if, you, so if you're saying how many calories is, is, are in a food, you're basically, <laughs> that's, like, that's like asking how many centimeters are in a carrot. So if a carrot seven centimeters long, you'd say it's, there's seven <laughs> centimeters in a carrot. That, that's, that doesn't mean there's little things called centimeters, centimeters running around in your carrot. Rolling around on the carrot. Yeah. Um, so in, in terms of this, I think I think the way that the... I, I think there's a few things going on here. I think obesity is definitely something that um, can increase your risk of different diseases. So I definitely think it's, um, as a health risk, it is something that um, should be addressed in some way. However, I don't think the way that the government tries to deal with it is necessarily the most effective way. The mm. way that they've tried to deal with it pr predominantly is through shame and stigmatization. Um, you find a lot of times people that are um, obese, um, they kind of get dismissed by uh, doctors because they see all of their problems um, as stemming from their obesity, um, which isn't always going to be the case. Yeah. Um, so I, I think, I think th also on top of that, calories on menus are not necessarily very helpful for people who have um, a history of um, eating disorders or mm -hmm. who have them. And uh, while I personally would find calories on sort of fast food and caffeine menus being to be incredibly helpful. Pretty useful. Yeah. yeah. So if you so if you're someone that say goes to the gym and it like or needs to have an idea of how much um, energy you're putting into your body. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it could be very helpful, but then it could also be very harmful for other people. I think that um, I think that ultimately it's a good idea. Um, well, sorry, I think that it's a good idea in a vacuum or in theory. Yes. I think in practice, without um, without any of the sort of proper uh, help in other areas, uh, so, such as mental health or training doctors to see past obesity mm -hmm. when looking for um, uh, other sort of health problems. I think without those, it's going to have a negative effect yeah. um, rather than the positive one that they're looking for. It may give you like the illusion that you're getting the full scope of the nutritional <coughs> value of a piece of food when there's like even like the micronutrients and macronutrients are quite mm. important. Some healthier foods can have a lot more calories than unhealthy foods Yeah, for different reasons. That's, so, yeah. That's the thing though. The, the idea of the concept of a healthy food and an un unhealthy food is just, it, it just doesn't really... It, it doesn't really make much sense. I mean, yeah. bro you can say broccoli is a healthy food, but if you eat too much broccoli, you still eat too much broccoli. It's just a case of it's a case of having a balanced diet with the right nutrients and the you know the sort of correct amount of energy for however mm. much you're you're putting out. Yeah. Um. There there are no healthy or unhealthy foods. There are healthy and unhealthy diets. Really. Yes. Yeah. 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 If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash sci guys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on old Sci Guys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sci Guys Pod to find out when we're doing more live shows. <laughs>